on this episode of Inside the Blueprint. Getting fresh produce from farm to table isn't a simple process. We'll take a look at how LA produce distributors manage such a tedious operation. The construction industry is constantly expanding. See how one Los Angeles law firm handles the unique legal issues that come along with construction law. The drone industry has seen tremendous growth in recent years. We'll look at how one company is soaring to new heights to make sure there are licensed drone pilots who can meet the demand. This and much more. When it comes to growers and suppliers in the fresh food supply chain, how many of us really understand what it takes to provide the fresh fruits and vegetables that we buy at our local grocery store? Well, today, we're going to take a deep dive inside the industry with the good folks over at LA Produce Distributors. I'm Matthew Clark, and um, I'm co-founder and president of LA Produce Distributors, and we are an importer marketer and distributor of fresh produce across the United States. We started five years ago with my good friend, Jesse Garcia. We got together and we, you know, we thought that we've been doing this for so many years for other companies. Um, we were very successful at it and we, you know, um, we truly believe that we, uh, turning 50, we should be doing this but for ourselves. So ultimately we decided to go on our own and we had vendors, we had customers and these past years have been fantastic and it's been a really big success for us, so we're very happy. Walking into the local grocery store, many of us will head straight for the fresh produce sign. But just how fresh are the items we're getting? Fresh produce is not exactly what most customers think. They, you know, they can't, in their minds, they think that the product is, you know, they walk into a store and pick up a banana or an apple and they think that that came from the farmer next door and was picked the previous night, right? And they walked in and, 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 and bought the product. To keep the shelves, you know, full year round, we have to go all around the world, including, you know, South America and, and you know, keep the product coming in. That involves vessels, it involves cold chain, it involves trucks, distribution centers. So um, fresh produce management really is about all those little details and keeping that cold chain uninterrupted from beginning to end. And so that way our customer can receive a product that has a longer shelf life and looks fresh, even though it was picked 45 days before. Our relationship with growers is everything. And it's not just for us as distributors and importers, but also for the retailers. What keeps us all alive and what keeps those shelves full are growers that are able to, you know, to, to start planting something, sometimes several years ahead of time. A tree takes five, six years to produce their first crop. Our relationship with them really is to be able to service them by selling all their products, all their sizes, all their qualities at the highest price possible. Um, many retailers, they buy one or two sizes. Well, what we do is we provide, you know, the, the ability to sell all the sizes and all the qualities. And then some of them we sell to retail, some of them we sell to juice uh, bars, some of them we sell it, you know, to restaurants and, and other kinds of businesses. We're able to sell the full crop of the grower. So our relationship with growers, you know, makes their life worth, worth it. Aside from the growers, there are a few other pieces to the puzzle that need to be connected before we see any of these fresh fruits and vegetables in our local market. A wholesaler basically is based out of a terminal market most of the time, and they handle stuff for people on consignment or price after sale when there's issues with it usually, or there's a large amount of, in the market. Sometimes it's the price, sometimes it's not priced, depends. Fresh cut would be us selling the fruit whole to your processor and then the processor processing it into slices or chunks and selling it to the end consumer or the retailer, okay? So in DSD is direct store delivery where we break everything down per pallet, per store, deliver it to the stores, in turn the customer saves on the delivery saves on a truck driver, saves on a buyer, distribution center, so it saves a tremendous amount of money for the customer. Obviously, dealing with perishable items, time is of the essence. What are some of the biggest challenges you face getting from farm to market? So as, as produce importers and distributors, we face multiple challenges. We already talked about the logistics issues. We talked about the, maintaining the cold chain. We talked about, you know, um, trying to, to, to sell all the sizes and the qualities that the growers have. Um, ultimately, what we bring to the table is we're the buffer that's in the middle that's able to, you know, generate 
um, a balance between supply and demand. When, a, when a, a grower has too much crop and the supermarket can't take it, well, somebody has to be able to take that excess and place it somewhere. We're the ones that are able to create you know, ads with retailers and with different customers to increase the, the demand on certain times of the year when they're needed to be able to move the product. We're the ones that are anticipating you know, these, these, these market movements um, and pricing accordingly. So ultimately, what we, what we do is try to read the markets as best as possible right, and move the volumes that, are, that have come available to us so we can service the grower the best possible and at the same time, the end customer get the freshest produce possible. When dealing with fresh fruits and vegetables, you are dealing with a perishable item. Temperature is paramount. So you need to make sure that the temperature never breaks. If you're eating a fruit, a peach, for example, in February, that peach came from South America because we don't grow peaches in the winter. Those are summer fruits. So when you eat that fruit, how do we make sure that that fruit tastes good? We have to make sure that it's packaged in the right temperature. We have to make sure that the vessel it's brought in, which takes three weeks, doesn't damage the fruit. And then we have put them in the dock, put them on semis, make sure the semi is refrigerated and comes to our place. If you're a grower, LA Produce Distributors is a good place to go with your fruit because of the different amount of customers we have. We have major chain stores, we have independent chains, and we have the mom and pop stores. We also sell food processors and things like that. So if your tree has different grades, we can position it so we can go to the right customer. We have a fleet of trucks that delivers a couple hundred stores every day throughout Southern California. And we go three times a week to Nevada and to Utah. So a independent mom and pop store can have your product, your label in that store, where it would be basically impossible without us. So if you're in need of fresh produce distribution, LA Produce Distributors want to be your one-stop resource. We've done a great job in the five years uh, Matt and I have uh, ran this operation and uh, I think we're the place to come for fresh produce. For if you're a customer, if you're a grower or a shipper, we uh, will take care of you and uh, make sure you get the best return for your uh, product. For more information about LA Produce Distributors, visit their website at laproducedistributors.com. And of course, visit our website at insidetheblueprint.com. All across the US, the construction industry is booming. And with the growth of the construction industry comes the need for experienced construction law attorneys that can assist with those unique types of legal issues. The legal team at McGinnis & Associates is making sure that Los Angeles is well represented when those issues do arise. I'm Joe McGinnis, managing partner at McGinnis & Associates. We're a law firm specializing in construction law though we represent our clients uh, in all types of business litigation. We distinguish ourselves from the iconic firms by value. We approach legal services like a contractor, eliminating unnecessary costs. And this allows us to provide the highest quality work from senior lawyers at greatly reduced hourly rates. Your firm covers several areas of practice, but construction law is your main focus. What does construction law cover? Construction law involves any legal issue in the construction industry, which would include the building of highways, uh, high-rise buildings, airports, hospitals, or other structures. We understand the industry and how projects are designed and built, which includes the review of plans, specifications, schedules, job cost data, and change orders. Construction litigation uh, would involve defects, delay, product liability, bond, lien, and stop notice rights, and ultimately lawsuits. What are some of the best practices companies should think about before hiring a contractor? When selecting a contractor, you should consider, especially in California, the contractor's license, that they have the appropriate license for the work that you want done. Uh, obviously, you want to know something about the contractor's integrity. You also want to know whether the contractor has experience performing the type of work that you're having done. You'd like to know the contractor's financial stability. You'll also want to know, uh, check some references on the contractor, see how other people have fared with the contractor, 
and you'll want to know what the contractor's warranty provisions are. Permits are important because, first of all, they are the legal permission to begin building a project in California. In addition to that, permits represent an approval by the authority having jurisdiction of the plans so that your project will be approved when it's finally built. A well-defined contract is important because people tend to remember things in a manner that best supports whatever their position is. A contract provides a reminder of what the agreement actually was. In a construction contract, the key elements are time, price, and scope of work. Construction defects, delayed claims, construction disputes, what are some of the most common legal issues that come through the doors at McGinnis & Associates? The most common types of construction cases that we tend to see are cases over delays and extra work claims. When an owner asks for extra or even different work, it necessarily will affect the price of the project and the time it takes to complete the project. If the owner and the contractor can't agree that it is indeed extra work, what the cost of that extra work is or how it affects the schedule, that can lead to disputes. It's important to remember that when delays occur on construction projects, it adversely affects both the owner and the contractor. In such situations, both the owner and the contractor feel like they're the aggrieved party and are expecting compensation. This dynamic leads to litigation. So if you're ever in need of an experienced law firm to tackle your legal issues related to construction, be sure to contact the seasoned professionals of McGinnis and Associates. Construction litigation requires a specific knowledge. We understand the statutes, the case law, the performance standards, and potential contract requirements that come into play when a construction issue arises. At McGinnis & Associates, our approach to cases is to treat the matter as if we were the client. We want to make the best business decision for our contractor that we would make if we were running the business. For more information about McGinnis & Associates, visit their website at McGinnisAndAssociates.com. And of course, visit our website at InsideTheBlueprint.com. The majority of life's most important and special moments rotate around food, cooking with your family, sharing a meal with your friends, or making that first sandwich as a kid. And there's a company that's helped families to create these memories for more than 50 years. My grandfather moved to the United States in 1967 um, with the aspirations of starting his own company. By 1969, he had his own company called Sema Meat Products. And then by 1980, my, when my father and, and my uncle started to get into the business as well as the second generation, he decided to incorporate it to the business that is known today, which is Seabow Meat Products. This third generation family owned deli meat manufacturing company specializes in making quality products and providing excellence in service. We make several products here, uh, several brand names. We have the Salami Campesino, which was actually the very first salami in 1969. Next is our Salami Induveca, which is actually the number one best selling salami in the United States. It's an embedded casing, it's made with pork and beef and has a different flavor profile. We've also debuted a Hamoneta Campesino, which is like a Spanish style luncheon loaf similar to a ham. The next is the Salapeno, which is a salami made with jalapenos. The last one is the Cibao Longanisa. It's a 100% pork product with no soybean fillers or anything like that. It's actually a traditional Dominican staple. And that's what Cibao Meats is known for, a tradition of quality. It's actually our, our slogan that we started back in the 80s, Tradición de Calidad. Uh, today, I'm president of the National Supermarket Association. Uh, I've been in business for over 40 years with my family. I've known them since I was 10 years old, so that means that I, I've been dealing with Saval Meats for a very long time. And they have the best product and the best service that I could tell you. With a great variety of salami, Sibao has found a perfect balance for a high quality and delicious product. Some of the benefits of purchasing our product, one, it's, it's most of our products are fully cooked, which means it can be had straight out of the fridge cold, or you can pan fry it for a different flavor or use it for any other dishes that you can mix with rice, pasta, etc. If it doesn't have our logo from the start, 
don't put it in your shopping cart. With state-of-the-art technology, Seabow Meat has placed itself in the forefront of the deli meat manufacturing business. We make all fresh products through the conveyor belts and the mixers and the brine tank. Everything's automated with a specific program yielding a consistent product. With the new technology that we have, we're actually yielding at a much faster pace with it being packaged, boxed, palletized, and then immediately sent into our warehouse where, where the rotation, picking, and our distribution goes to the customers. New technology has also helped companies like Seabow Meat elevate food safety practices and protocols. Our hygiene measures are held at a high standard. We follow the USDA regulations and guidelines, such as the good manufacturing practices. For instance, if, if an employee has to step out of the production floor, he has to re-sanitize, re-sanitize their boots as well, wash their hands, change their uniform before they can go back to work. It's important to find a company that stands behind their work. That's why Seabow Meat provides customers one of the best products on the market. We distribute our products uh, daily with our own fleet of vehicles. Uh, part of our production methods and a way of, of making sure that our quality is high is that we don't make any products uh, without the orders already in. So we have, a, but we have a very short lead time. So most of our products, as soon as they're manufactured, are seven days or less before they get into the stores and in your hands. What I like most about about Cibao is, is that they treat you like family. They don't treat you as a customer. To find out more about Cibao Meat and where to obtain their products, go to cibaomeat.com, and of course visit us at insidetheblueprint.com. The drone industry has completely revolutionized our everyday lives. From recreation to security and even travel. Now with new opportunities in the field comes a growing demand for experienced drone pilots. One company who's servicing that need for industries all across the U.S. is Drone Strategic Partners. My name is Jason Sewer and I'm the CEO of Drone Strategic Partners. We've been in business for three years now, and our main mission is to help as many people as possible through the use of drone technology, to offer solutions for individuals and for businesses, and also to provide career paths and job training for the next generation as well. Over the last decade, we've seen the use of drones increase by leaps and bounds. What are some of the ways drone technology is now being used? The most common civilian usage of drone technology is certainly through the real estate industry. We do real estate assessments to help real estate professionals prepare their listings to figure out how much damage has occurred if a storm is hit and to help contractors assess the type of property so that they can either build or rebuild structures on site. After natural disasters and catastrophic events, drone technology is very useful in helping local officials ascertain the level of damage, the severity of any impending issues, and to try to save as many lives as possible if, if that's the case. Drone Strategic Partners has developed a very comprehensive security program that is centered around protecting our youth, especially around schools. We clearly in this country have a problem with mass shootings and incidents are clearly on the rise. Through the use of surveillance technology and drone technology, our comprehensive program allows us to have plainclothes individuals on site we're now looking to have a vigilante style approach. And in the interim, we protect everyone on site from either an active shooter or any other situation that could be dangerous. Becoming a professional drone pilot requires FAA licensing and specific training. But does everyone need to have a license to fly a drone? The great thing about drone technology is that it has been brought to the public in a cheap and affordable way. In order to be paid for those services, one must obtain the license, and therein lies the value of passing the Part 107 exam. 
It's comprised of eight different parts, swinging from weather to psychology and to obviously learning how to operate and utilize the drone properly. Education is key for the future of the drone industry. How does drone strategic partners help to ensure that aspiring drone pilots have the knowledge and resources to successfully enter the field? Kids love flying drones. They love flying drones for a bunch of different reasons. We've developed a curriculum centered around drone economics. We show these students that they can make money in various industries where the technology is already prevalent. Real estate, insurance, construction. Over 60% of all deliveries in this country by the year 2030 will be via drone technology. Pizzas, deodorant, soap, everything, video games, will all be delivered by drone. So if you're in need of expert drone solutions across the U.S., give the professional drone pilots of Drone Strategic Partners a call. For those who are looking to find out more information about this industry or maybe even to enter the industry, I highly recommend it. It's fun, it's exciting, and it's pioneering into a new future that will benefit us all. We're the one-stop shop to help you integrate yourself into this field. For more information about Drone Strategic Partners, visit their website at dronestrategicpartners.com. And of course, visit our website at insidetheblueprint.com. Baseball's come a long way since Babe Ruth. All sports have, but none more so than baseball. From little leagues to big leagues, the game is more competitive, more demanding than ever, requiring legendary skill, lightning reflexes, and crowd-pleasing performance. And the field, especially artificial turf, that athletes run, catch, and perform on, must meet the 21st century challenge. For the last 37 years of my career, my emphasis has always been on player safety, protecting players, ideally not having them get injured. So I really got involved with this artificial turf study to make sure that this was the best possible synthetic field for our players to play on. Globe Life Park, home of the Texas Rangers since 1994, remains. But in March 2020, the team relocated across the street to brand new Globe Life Field. A huge part of the 21st century cutting edge venue is a cutting edge playing surface manufactured by Shaw Sports Turf, one of North America's leading synthetic turf companies. The fact that we went out and we benchmarked uh, well manicured natural grass playing environments uh, and in those tests we take seven specific metrics uh, those metrics break down into three areas one is really player to surface interactions one is traction and and how that player behaves on the surface and then also uh, energy return and really how the, the ball interacts with the surface. The goal is to mimic well-manicured natural grass playing environment. And uh, through our research, we've been able to do that. Texas Rangers and other teams, after decades of playing on natural grass and two decades of intense research on field surfaces, athlete and ball mechanics decided the benefits of playing on Shaw Sports synthetic grass surfaces was simply too good to pass up. Shaw had a commitment to getting the baseball surface right that was different than any other manufacturer that we, we did on our preliminary visit. And then in subsequent visits, you know, they demonstrated a commitment to baseball and to baseball playing surface that was beyond anyone else. Shaw Sports Turf prides itself on being at the industry and manufacturing forefront for better performing, 
safer, and more durable synthetic sports turf fields. As that leader, more and more sports teams, from little leagues to big leagues, are turning to Shaw Sports Turf for energy efficient, water saving, and big league cutting edge solutions. The main reason Paragon Sports Constructors decided to partner with Shaw Sports Turf Systems was their devotion to research and development. And uh, basically, they're not doing what nobody else in the business is doing. We've worked with a lot of the, the other major manufacturers, and Shaw, by far and away, is light, light years above everybody else. Installation of the new synthetic turf began in late February 2020, requiring two weeks of precision teamwork from start to finish. Some fields now, it's a, it's a rubber pellet with a sand combination. That's what Toronto and Tampa Bay have. But we're actually playing with a new product with Shaw, which is actually an organic infill. So it's a uh, ground up coconut shell and it acts and feels and looks like a natural dirt. So the turf system here is specifically designed for baseball. There's the B1K shock pad underneath the turf system here, and the uh, turf is a very dense product, specifically with two tones of color to look very natural on TV and play just like natural grass. This field was benchmarked off the old Texas Rangers field. When an organization as disciplined as the Texas Rangers does its homework, the payoff can be, well, like batting a thousand. Well, the turf is nice. It feels like grass. The technology of this grass is 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 made to feel like you playing in regular grass. I think it's going to be a a very good surface for the players to play. We are thrilled to have the Shaw surface on this field. Uh, we went to all the manufacturers on the synthetic side and said, "Listen, we are not even going to consider this unless you can deliver to us the best." playing surface in Major League Baseball. Well, it's looking good, Chuck. It's really great. Uh, as you can tell, it's pretty close right now. So one more lift of sand and then geofill. That is correct. We're going to turn it over to Dennis and his group. Right. Uh, Let the grounds guys get on and figure out how to moisture condition and maintain. And should be, uh, should be able to maintain it pretty easily. Well, it looks great. Y'all have done an outstanding Thank job on Thank it. Thank you. We're very proud of it. To learn more about Shaw Sports Turf, 20 years of excellence in over 3,000 field and stadium installations, and how Shaw Sports can help propel your organization into the 21st century, both on and off the field, visit shawsportsturf.com. Or to view this segment again, visit us at insidetheblueprint.com. Thanks for watching Inside the Blueprint. For more information on any of the products you saw today or to find out how to become part of the show, please visit InsideTheBlueprint.com.